Hi, everyone. I'm Deanne Castro, Creative Memories Advisor in Bakersfield, California. And I want to show you the border I came up with just yesterday. Um, actually, guys, this uh, takes me a long time to come up with these ideas. I'm not naturally creative, although you may not believe me. But um, I came up with this border using uh, something that was a bundle in the Black Friday bundles that were by you know a certain amount get at the bundle free this past year. So let's go to the desktop. And this is the border that I came up with using the square punch. Okay. Um, I have the paper pack which is the candlelit paper pack that I used. Now, this one's no longer available, but I bet you can probably find one, uh, your advisor can find one for you. Um, it came with the paper, it came with this template that you can make uh, trace and make candles and stuff on your pages for birthdays. Um, also places you could put photos, just an idea. Um, so here's the front of it give you an idea of what that would look like, the colors and stuff in this paper pack. And it came with this punch. This is a flames and drops punch, which then allows you to make the, the same size flames on the candles as what's in this template. So I'll show you what I made today. And I've got other colors that I used to show you, you can use the current things and stuff like that. So let's get started. Okay, I've used a lot of this paper, as you can tell, uh, making these borders. So um, hopefully I have enough left to show you. So I'm going to take my regular blade out of here and put in the scoring blade. Now, um, I'm going to score this at one and a quarter inches. So make sure that you've got it straight all the way down. So that's one and a quarter. Line it up on the line all the way down. And score it. Now don't push too hard because then you'll put, push right through the paper. But just make sure that you've got it scored enough where you can fold it easily. Okay. So I'm going to fold it this way. And then I'm going to mark this where I'm going to use the score punch. So I'm going to mark this a little more than a quarter of an inch down from the top. So I want to try and get it equal distance on the top and the bottom. It won't be exact, but it'll be close. So then I'm going to move this and I'm going to mark it two and one eighth inches down. Okay. Then the next I'm going to put about three sixteenths of an inch apart. This will make sense to you later. So this is three sixteenths of an inch. Then I'm going to go down another two inches and one eighth, two and one eighth inches. And I'm just going to do that all the way down. So this is going to be about three sixteenths, not quite one quarter, two and an eighth, then three sixteenths, two and an eighth, and three sixteenths, and two and an eighth. Now, this is what this looks like. So this is just over a quarter inch from the top. This is two and one eighth inches. Then this is three sixteenths, not quite a quarter of an inch. Two and one eighth, three sixteenths. Two and an eighth, three sixteenths. Two and an eighth, three sixteenths, and two and an eighth. So see, it brings it pretty close, about the same distance to the bottom. Now it's not gonna be exact, um, 
But as long as you get it close, that's what's important. So I'm going to turn this punch around. And this mark here, this one right here, the two and an eighth inch, is going to be down here in the bottom. And it'll come about a quarter of an inch up. The one on the top is going to be about a quarter of an inch in from the top. So you're going to put this in here. And this is going to be about here. So you can see where that is, but I'm going to pull it in just a little bit. The top one. Now oh, there's so much of a shadow. Let's see if I can get this. It's going to be kind of hard to see. But the top mark. That one right there. See that? That is going to be right where it's going to cut up here in the top. Kind of hard. It's kind of confusing. And you're definitely going to want to uh, try this on some scratch paper before you actually do your punch. But this is what it's going to look like. Just going to cut this much. Okay. And I'm going to punch it. Now you're going to go down. You see, I didn't get exact, but that's okay. I'll show you what I mean towards the end. So we're going to do the same thing. This one punched here. That one punched up on the top. Again. Right about here. Okay. <laughs> Punch it. Sorry about that. Move down here. Now this is pretty easy with all this extra paper down here to get this right on the cut line. When we get to the the bottom one, it's going to be a little more difficult to get it looking like a square. So do your best. Move down to the bottom mark, move to this mark. Okay, so this, you can't even see the mark, but you know that it's right there. That's the important part because you want it to cut right there. Okay. All right, now we're down to the last one. Now we don't have this extra piece on the bottom to give us the stability. So you have to really kind of gauge it to look as close as you can to a triangle on this paper. It's okay if it's not exact, but do, it your, do your best. Okay, so it actually looks like a triangle in there as close as you can. Okay, so then you have this. So see how I didn't get right on those cut marks, but it's close. All of these are kind of close. Okay, they're not going to be exactly the same, but we're going to cover that up so people won't know, you know, that you didn't get it exact. Okay, I'm going to take these and I'm going to cut them in half. Just line up the points here. And you don't have to stack them. You can do them individually if you want. I'm going to try to stack them and see what happens here. Okay, I'm going to put the regular blade back in here. Line it up with fold mark to cut these. They don't have to be perfect, but as close as you can get them will be best. Okay. Okay, and those are cut. Now we're going to cut this one, fold it back over, and we're going to cut this at the one and a quarter. Okay, if it helps, I like to leave the paper on here. You could have cut this at two and a half inches and fold it in half, but it's easier when you have more paper to hold it steady when you're cutting it. So I'm using these little marks here. Okay, so that you can see when I pull this down where it's gonna cut right here. It's gonna cut right on that line. 
camera's not really showing it, but it is, believe me. Same here on the bottom. Pull this out from the bottom, push it up, and make sure that that black line lines right up to where you want to cut it. Okay. And I'm going to cut this down. Okay, so this is the piece we're going to use. Isn't that pretty? Now we're going to use the wavy cutter. Now, when I first started this, I centered this on here because it had a straight edge. Okay, so I centered it. So you've got the square showing here on the top and a square showing here on the bottom. I lined it right up along this line, which is gonna give me just a little bit of a wavy cut so that I can start on the waves. Okay, what I'm cutting here are two of these pieces, okay? But since I've already got the other side cut, I'm going to use that because I'm running out of paper. Okay, now I'm gonna center this again and I'm gonna line these with a quarter of an inch cut. Okay, so I'm gonna put this end as close to this right here, which is two marks up from where it actually cuts. And I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. So I'm gonna line this up a little better. Push it over just a little bit. Doesn't have to be super exact, but you can get it close. I'm gonna have to lift that up to move this one over. Okay. So see how this one, that edge is lined up right with the second mark here. Not where the pink line is, but the one over from there. Okay, I'm gonna cut this one. Just a little. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the second one because we want to. It looks like I have just enough paper to do this. Okay, and then this way, the paper will be as close to the same size as the other one. Okay, perfect. Move that out of the way. Okay, so what I want to do is a really old trick. This was back, guys, from like the early, 2000s, late 1990s, okay, where we took the two wavy pieces and we're going to kind of weave them together. So put these up by the top, make it even, and just twist them together. Okay, isn't that cool? I think at one point we did three but it gets a little more confusing. So the two is just super easy. Now I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the bottom and the top to hold them together right about where they cross over. Oops, that's not what I wanted, but that's all right. Not the repositionable here. Okay, and do the same thing on the other side. Lift this up, the adhesive about right there, put it back under, put the adhesive about here. Okay, now that's gonna go on this one. Put some more adhesive on these center parts. And then I'm going to, oops, that needs to go underneath. Okay. 
There we go. There we go. Now it's twisted together. All right, now I'm going to add this right down the center of this. And this is why I said it didn't have to be exact cutting those squares because this covers up those sections. So you can't see if you've got them straight or not, or even or not. Okay? So there you have that, just like that. Isn't that cool? I love this. I love this. Okay, now I'm going to take. This is Mars Shimmer, and um, but you could probably use the Firecracker Red Shimmer Paper. They're very, very close. They'll work good together. I just want to use this up. Okay, so I'm cutting this at two and three quarters. This is going to be the backing of this border. So this is a two and three quarter inch piece. I'm going to put the adhesive on the back here. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is so much fun for me. I really love doing this for you. Um, if you like my borders, feel free to click on the uh, subscribe button. And then you can also click on the bell and you'll get notifications when my videos come out, usually each week. Hey, isn't that gorgeous? It's not pretty. I just love this. Okay, now you can then take these squares, or actually they're not triangles, but they were squares, and add them to the sides. just to add a little bit of extra color, okay? So let's see, say I wanna take the orange here on the top and slide this here and make it meet up with the edge, okay? So you just slide it underneath, make the distances as close as you can, doesn't have to be perfect, and put them in there. Just slide it under that wavy piece that you put on there. Okay. This one, I've got this blue here. So I can do the yellow here. Okay yellow on the other side. And depending on the embellishments that you add, you may not use both sides. But since I don't have any embellishments on here yet, I'm just showing you how to put it on here for both sides. Okay, next, we can use blue. And we can use the light blue. And you can mix and match these however you'd like. You don't have to do these exact, just so that they're alternate colors. Okay, leave the bottom, leave the top, so we don't need these reds. And now you can add your embellishments. Okay, so for this one, I used the template. And what I did was I took the paper and I traced this pattern on here. So I just traced the pattern on there and um, actually did the backside. So, so I wouldn't see any of the marks, but I used a pencil so I could erase it. 
So if you want to do the back side, you would turn it over. Because then when you flip it over, then the pieces would match. So that's what I did for that. And then I used this punch to get the top flame card on here. Or you can just trace that if you want. Doesn't matter. Same here for the bottom. This I just used this one. Traced it, cut it out, added it, and added the flames on there. So this is a fun little template if you can find one of these. Otherwise, I took this paper that was in the pack and I just hand cut some of the candles. So that's what this is right here, okay? For the sake of time, I've already cut three of these. So I'm gonna add these on here. Already put adhesive on them. Okay, then I have some embellishments from a birthday pack from several years ago, actually. So then I can add time to celebrate, add those candles. I could put this um, birthday cake on the bottom. Or let's see, I could move this down here, put this blue balloon up here for love. So I could um, finish it off just however, whatever embellishments I have, whatever I want it to look like, okay? So here's another one using the same paper pack, but this time I did not put the triangles on the side. I thought it was really pretty just without those triangles. I didn't need the added extra color in here. So I did use uh, the paper. I used the wavy trimmer and twisted those around and added them on and added some other embellishments. And then I just used the Mars shimmer and cut out just plain candles to put on here. This one, I used our current birthday bonanza. And I loved how this came out. I just thought it was so cute using that uh, balloon streamers and the embellishments. And then I did one last one. This one was with the autumn paper that we just had that came out. So see how versatile this idea is? You can use it with just any paper that you're using for your photos for that time frame, And um, it's very, very versatile. So hope you liked it. Um, if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me at uh, deannecmc2 at yahoo.com. Um, if you don't have an advisor, I can help you out. You can check out my website, but please, if you have an advisor, please, please get a hold of her because I'm sure she works very hard for you to find your supplies. Um, and I have a Facebook group that's kind of in process. And if you'd like to join, just, uh, go to my Facebook group. Let's scrapbook with Deanne request to join. I'll let you in. I'm um, trying to remember to show you new products that are coming out. Um, any other uh, tidbits and stuff like that that um, I have to share with you guys. And this is a place for you guys to post and share your, your photos of, of the borders that you may have created using my videos. So I'd love to see them. Okay. So I will sign off for now. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you that watch my videos. So um, have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. And I will talk to you again soon. Thank you so much.